Hello and welcome to Field Study, an exploration of food and the landscape. So in this week's episode, I've come down here to this beautiful patch of rocky coastline and I'm going to introduce you to what I believe is one of the most underrated edible seaweeds in the UK. Stay tuned. So this rather attractive seaweed that we see here floating on top of the rock pool is known as Japanese wireweed, Sargassum muticum. And here in the UK, it's a highly invasive species. This species originates from the other side of the planet and the thinking is that it got here to the UK uh, in shipments of oysters and has slowly colonized its way across the coast. And it's an incredible plant. Um, these ones that we see here are very young as it's very early on in the year. But as we go later on into the spring and the summer, you'll see this form huge mats and clumps which can choke out entire harbors and uh, get caught in propellers of boats and cause all sorts of problems. It can outcompete the native seaweeds and choke rock pools of light so other things can't live and photosynthesize. You can recognize Japanese wireweed by this long trailing structure with these sort of uh, pinnate leaflet things coming off it. It also has these spherical sacs of air which run all the way along the, uh, the trailing structure of the plant. And it's this beautiful antique gold, green gold color. So when it's young like this, it really is quite easy to pick out entire plants uh, so you can save the rock pool and give uh, the rest of everything that's growing in it the chance over the course of the summer to grow. Like most seaweeds, it is incredibly nutritious. So this is a good source of calcium, it's a good source of potassium, and it's a good source of magnesium. So uh, three incredible minerals you can get just by eating this stuff. Uh, you could take it home, you could compost it. It's very, very good for the garden. So one of the more interesting things about this and some other seaweeds is that it contains a compound which is one of the things that your body loses if you've had um, a, heavy, a heavy night on the drink. So if you eat this seaweed the night before and the morning after, you could potentially, now don't take my word for this, you could potentially lessen the effects of a hangover, which um, I make a lot of homemade wine, so uh, at certain times of year that could come in quite useful. Now the Latin name for this is interesting, Sargassum muticum. Uh, sargassum is actually where the name for the Sargasso Sea comes from. So the Sargasso Sea is named after this weed or this type of weed um, because it grows out there in the middle of nowhere away from any land. Um, and this was a problem for sailors of old. Uh, in fact, if you read in Christopher Columbus's diaries, there's a few entries where he spots weed surrounding the ship and he's convinced that he must be near land somewhere, but there's no land to be seen. And it really disturbs him and keeps him up at night. And that's because there's these huge drifts of sargassum weed out there, um, which makes it the perfect habitat for our native European eels to travel to. So if you've ever heard that European eels travel out to the Sargasso Sea to breed, that is because this species provides an incredible nursery for them um, and they're relatively safe out there. This seaweed propagates best by division. So small bits of it breaking off and being carried in the tide um, and taking root on other rocks further down the coastline. So when you're foraging for this, uh, make sure you take the whole thing that you've dislodged because otherwise you could be worsening the problem. Um, but when you do, if you taste it, it's got that lovely sort of uh, minerally sort of iodine thing that seaweed has. And it can be used in a lot of the same ways that seaweed can. You can fry it and make it crispy. You can powder it and add it into soups and stews to add that odd uh, umami depth of flavor. Um, and it really is a very versatile ingredient. So by clearing it from the UK coastline, you could be doing our rock pools a favor and also get yourself a tasty and delicious meal. Even though it's January, there are plenty more foraging videos to come. So if you haven't already, please click that like button and hit subscribe for more foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. Another episode of the Field Study Podcast will be going live this week, so I hope you enjoy that. And as the season progresses, we'll be back down here on the beach learning about lots of other different edible species of seaweed. There is really incredible variety in the UK and they all have their different uses uh, and different flavour profiles and they're something that in my opinion you should be adding into your diet. Right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, the sun is about to set into the sea. I think it's going to be another beautifully clear, frosty and starry night tonight. 
So I'm looking forward to getting out for a night hike. Um, I hope you have a great week and until next week, take care.